Stay tuned. Filter next. Do you remember where you were on 9999? Did you ever think a fighting game could be so addictive? Or that a polygonal blue hedgehog could look so good? Dust off that old white console because it's time to count down your favorite Dreamcast games right now on Filter. and welcome to Filter. A hand-picked top 10 video game countdown is voted on by you, the viewer, at G4TV.com. From Arrow Wings to Zombie Revenge and everything in between, the Sega Dreamcast went from the top of the console world to the bottom faster than you can say PS2. But along the way, the little white console that could delivered some groundbreaking titles that still look and play great today. And this unforgettable console deserves some unforgettable recognition. So today, I stand before you as its most unforgettable character, ooh la la. So, it's with great reverence, high esteem, and some bittersweet nostalgia that we look back on your favorite Dreamcast games. But before we do that, we thought you might want to know a little bit of the history behind Sega's Great White Hope, and what made it so great in the first place. Dreamcast was a Sega console that was put out in the late 90s. I thought the system was going to do really well. I was really excited about its release. It had really good hardware for the time. It was Sega's next big console after the Sega Saturn. The Sega Saturn was a miserable failure for Sega, and they really wanted to get back into the race. So they put out the Dreamcast way before any of these next generation systems came out. Unfortunately, they might have been a little bit too early. It came at a sort of awkward time, and right before the release of PlayStation 2. So unfortunately, it didn't build the uh, fan base that it could have. It kind of has a special place in a lot of gamers' hearts because there were a lot of great games for it, a lot of very, I guess you could call them gamers' games. It wasn't selling as well, I guess, as the other platforms because some of the other consoles were doing better. They could make more mediocre titles and lots of them, but the Dreamcast had this small library and a lot of the games were actually really excellent and original. they still make games for the Dreamcast. I don't understand how two years pass and the system still is as powerful as the newer generation systems that are on the market right now, yet nobody's made a game for it in ages. So now that you know what made the Dreamcast great, let's get to the countdown. We begin with a title that proved country club members aren't the only ones who can enjoy a little racket action. At number 10 is Virtua Tennis. Virtual Tennis is a fantastic game. It's uh, it's basically simplicity defined. You know, it's, uh, you just move the joystick, press one button. Um, it's about as simple as tennis is itself, and just as complex. Usually, tennis games were kind of limited in terms of movement around the court, but with virtual tennis, it's not like a basic pong type game or a ping pong type game. I mean, it actually required a great degree of skill. That was like the very first tennis game that I played that was actually realistic. The player models looked really real. The speed for the game was just right, you know, it seemed really realistic. Virtual Tennis is by far the best tennis game I've ever played, um, genre breaker. Virtua Tennis helped take you off the couch and onto the court. Our next game helped bring the arcade to your living room, which inevitably put your ass right back on the couch. For that faction of the population who enjoys hunting the undead, House of the Dead 2 is for you. House of the Dead 2 is a funny shooting game. Um, I think the thing that I remember most about House of the Dead 2 are these kind of ridiculous uh, voice acting. Please be safe, G. It was a very fast-paced game, but it also had some really uh, amusing dialogue. I don't want to die! The voice acting was terrible. 
but that made it cool. It made it funny and fun. Unfortunately, House of the Dead 2 came out right after the Columbine shooting, so Sega was like, you know what, we can't release the gun. There's no way we can release the gun peripheral. Of course, everyone went ahead and bought the import version so you can use a light gun. If you like the feel of cold steel in your hands, but you also enjoy pummeling enemies with your fists, then you're a prime candidate for our next game. Utilizing power-ups, weapons, and interactive environments, Power Stone was a fighting game that broke new ground for digital pugilists, which is exactly why it comes in at number eight. Power Stone is probably my favorite uh, game from the Dreamcast library. It's uh, sort of classic Capcom stuff. It's fast, it's fun, it's colorful, it's, uh, it's got lots of character. It was really a nice mix between sort of complex and uh, simplistic gameplay. Power Stone is a cool type of game that's a 3D fighter, but for up to four people, and throwing not just punches and kicks, but also throwing items, and you have to watch out for things in the environment attacking you, and all sorts of stuff. It was a crazy fighting game, I and mean, you could throw stuff around and throw stuff at each other, you know, even throw each other, and uh, it probably in many ways it, it could also be seen as kind of a precursor to Super Smash Brothers. So, Power Stone is the first fighter to appear in our list, but I have a strong suspicion that it won't be the last. Anyway, we need to take a break, but when we come back, we'll continue our countdown of your top 10 Dreamcast games of all time, and we'll see what some Dreamcasts have been up to since retiring. Welcome back to Filter. I'm Diane Mizota, counting down your favorite Dreamcast games. The rankings for filter shows come directly from the responses you post on the G4 website. To make your vote count, log on to g4tv.com slash filter and select the filter rater. Then choose a category, vote on a scale of 1 to 10, and we'll take care of the rest. While you're there, be sure to post your suggestions for topics and games you'd like to see covered in future episodes. But let's get back to this episode. Coming in at number 7 is an RPG that takes the art of piracy to new heights. Literally, you play a cloud-faring scurvy dog who sets sail in the skies of Arcadia. Scars of Arcadia was a huge uh, RPG for the Dreamcast. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, when they think of RPGs, they think uh, during that time it was either a 2D thing or it was a kind of a polygon, characters with pre-rendered backgrounds. But this thing was all full poly 3D. So a lot of people got a real good taste as a different kind of RPG. And uh, it was so popular that it also moved into the GameCube. Big Dreamcast RPG that uh, introduced a cast of pirates who are actually good pirates, and you can take your ship around and have these really cool ship-to-ship -ship battles, which is probably the best part about the game. And you were always flying from like floating city to floating city, which is pretty much a standby in most RPGs. But this game, just the scope and the scale of it was so grand and cool that it made it really different and fun. Okay, so the pirates in Skies of Arcadia don't exactly make your neck hair stand up, but they sure know how to dress. Anyway, our number six title is a game that takes good music, amazing visuals, and a unique concept and puts them together in a tight package called Jet Grind Radio. For all you rollerblading graffiti artists, this one's for you. Jet Grind Radio was probably one of the first games that put cell shading onto the map. It, it had a really cool art style, it had a unique combination of gameplay, and that whole graffiti thing and the look of the game really complemented each other. Just the overall style of the game, from the music to the design of the characters to the plot of, you know, you're this group of kids that's going around um, spraying graffiti all over Tokyo definitely had a huge impact uh, on the industry as a whole. For the first time I saw the trailer, I couldn't believe they were making a game based on something like this. You know, when you booted up the game, it had a little warning, you know, please don't do this, or graffiti is art. So, it's just another thing that Sega kind of did differently compared to the competitors. The Dreamcast made its U.S. debut on September 9th, 1999, and showed a lot of prompts. 
But a mere four years later, the system was virtually forgotten thanks to the release of its three next-generation console competitors. So where'd they all go? Um, I still play it. Yeah, so I don't miss it too much. It's sitting in the closet right now, but I still pull it out every once in a while. My Dreamcast, I have actually like four or five of them in a box in my apartment, sitting away, disused, covered in dust, unfortunately. It's hooked up to my TV. I have two Dreamcasts hooked up to the TV, a Japanese one and an American one. I still play it every other day. My Dreamcast is in the basement now. My Dreamcast is in my cabinet next to my television, probably with my Nintendo 64. <laughs> I don't miss the Dreamcast that much because I still have one plugged in, so I, uh, I, still, I still visit it once in a while. Actually, I still have it. It's still hooked up in my living room. It's hard being a game reviewer to actually find some time to play older games. We were sleeping one night and a cat came in and took a dump inside my Dreamcast. <laughs> it avoided all the other consoles, went straight to the Dreamcast. Very sad, really, but uh, there you go. And ever since then, uh, it's never been quite the same. Probably a couple of them will be sold on, uh, on eBay. I'll probably just keep one Japanese one and one US one. My Dreamcast is collecting dust in the basement. You know, there's a whole bunch of other stuff down in the basement, too, so uh, I'm sure it's got a lot of company. Well, those aren't really the creative answers we were looking for. Personally, I prefer to use my Dreamcast as a blender on margarita night. Okay, we're about to break into the sweetest buy presented by Juicy Fruit, so let's get to it. Fantasy Star Online was the first console RPG to take the action online, and it comes in at number five. Check it out. Fantasy Star Online is one of the Dreamcast's greatest games. This is a game that took the multiplayer online RPG and brought it to consoles, and it did it completely different from how people were doing it on the PC, and people have lost friends, wives, girlfriends, you know, to that game. Like like any great addictive online game, that game has, has caused a lot of trouble. Like, just to give you an idea of how addicted I was to this game, the power went out in my apartment. Um, and my apartment had two different separate uh, fuses. The refrigerator and one light was on one, and the entire rest of the apartment was on the other. So the entire rest of the apartment, I lost power. So I unplugged the refrigerator, like dragged my TV and Dreamcast over into there and, and plugged it in just so that I could continue playing. Because there was no way I was going to stop. I was going to stop playing Fancy Star Online. While the seminal sitcom from the 70s, Taxi, put a human perspective on cab drivers, it wasn't until Crazy Taxi came to the Dreamcast in 2000 that people realized how much fun being hacked could be. And that's exactly why it comes in at number four. Crazy Taxi was another arcade game that got brought to the Dreamcast. It was basically a game where you would drive around and pick up passengers and take them places and get money for it. It was a score-based game. Just kind of crazy. It was downtown San Francisco, and we kind of modeled after that. Um, and it was awesome music, and just basically it was like something you could play for five, ten minutes and be satisfied with. You're able to take that fantasy and, you know, just run through everything and get them out of your car as fast as possible. And you get to listen to some pretty cool music, Offspring's soundtracks in the game. Crazy Taxi was probably the best arcade to console transition that I've seen. I mean, it really captured the whole craziness of the arcade game. And they had all these brand stores in there, like Tower Records and like Kentucky Fried Chicken and stuff like that. So it's a crazy game, like the name says. If you're a serious Dreamcaster, then you already have a pretty good idea of what our top three games are. But come on, what's the fun in knowing everything? Stick around, because after the break, you may be surprised at which title claimed the number one spot. And we'll also take a look at some of the weirdest Dreamcast games of all time. That'll happen when Filter returns. Welcome back to Filter. I'm Diane Mizota, counting down your favorite Dreamcast games of all time. With seven down and three to go, let's review where we've been so far. Virtua Tennis serves up the winner and aces the number 10 spot. House of the Dead 2 brings arcade action to the living room and occupies ninth place. Fighting its way into the 8th slot is the melding of fisticuffs and fine jewelry Power Stone. Skies of Arcadia takes to the clouds and flies into the number 7 slot. Vandalizing the competition at number 6 is Jet Grind Radio. The world's first online console RPG claims the 5th spot in the form of Fantasy Star Online. And Crazy Taxi goes off the beaten path to take the number four slot. 
In the number three title, there is no beaten path. It's up to you to create the path yourself. And use Suzuki's open-ended masterpiece, Shenmue. Shenmue is a still incredibly controversial game. You either love it or hate it. It was an interesting game. I think it was a little bit like too much like real life. Sometimes the dialogue was a little crazy and you didn't understand because of through the translation. What do you know about the incident? The incident? Yes. What do you know about the incident? You should ask the old lady. Ask the old lady about the incident. The day of the incident. The day of the incident? So it's really stunted, long-winded dialogue where I'm just like hitting the button like, okay, let's go, let's go, let's find the old lady now. It was a very different experience for games. Uh, we still haven't seen anything quite like it since, but unfortunately, it was a game that was mired with the Dreamcast's failure. It was definitely one of Sega's most expensive games they've ever made, and uh, unfortunately, it didn't do too well for them. Shenmue was unusual in that the game's environment was completely interactive. While Shenmue was different, the Dreamcast also had a chair flat-out bizarre game. But which ones were the most bizarre? Dreamcast had tons of cool weird games. Sega's known for their classic foil. My favorite one was Samba de Amigo. It had um, crazy cartoon monkeys. My personal favorite would be Chuchu Rocket. Chuchu Rocket was the first console online game, I believe. It was created by Sonic Team initially internally as a experiment for Dreamcast's online connectivity, and they decided to release it as a game in itself. Another one of my favorite ones was Typing of the Dead. You could use the keyboard and basically play House of the Dead, but instead of shooting, you had to type out a sentence quickly enough so you could shoot the zombies. Space Shuttle Fly was another pretty bizarre offering from Sega. It was basically a music game, but it featured ooh la la, swishing around like a model, so this is really quite like nothing that team had done before. Well, definitely the most bizarre Dreamcast game without a question is Seaman. You can package the microphone and basically the idea was that you nurture this bizarre underwater creature and eventually develop a relationship with it. Ask him how his day's going, he'll ask you how your day's going. To basically corresponding with a fish. And so eventually it would sort of make these sort of unnerving uh, observations about your life or ask you why you weren't home at the regular time and stuff like that. That pretty much takes the cake in terms of bizarre though. Okay, we've reached the point in the show where you determine the number one Dreamcast game of all time. So are you about adventure or do you believe in soul? Sonic Adventure followed the exploits of the world's most famous blue hedgehog after his 128-bit facelift. Although the game stayed true to its platforming roots, it marked the first time Sonic had ever appeared in the third dimension. Soul Calibur was the killer app of the Dreamcast launch, and even today it still wows anyone who sees it. But which of these Dreamcast launch titles is the best of all time? The only way to find out is to check out the Filter Face-Off. Well, Sonic Adventure is, I think, what everyone bought the Dreamcast for when it first came out. I, they wanted to see Sonic in full 3D. Sonic is a great character show, processor speed. I mean, he's just running full blast, and, you know, the environment's moving really quickly, and it, it was a very impressive title for the Dreamcast at that time. Oh, oh, that game was sweet. Sweet graphics, sweet levels, especially the courses, most of the loops and stuff they have on it. So it makes it fun. It was just fast and furious when you played the Sonic character. You could play as other characters, you know, from the series. Just kind of a fun game. Some people didn't like, you know, the open environments, kind of the adventure part of the game, but um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Soul Calibur is the game that sold the Dreamcast. It was just incredible. I mean, out of nowhere, this great, deep, gorgeous fighting game. It was a one-on-one -on -one fighting game where the players fought with, like, weapons. It was pretty much the first game of that kind, so it was a pace setter in that genre. In a certain sense, I think the original Dreamcast version of Soul Calibur was more impressive than the sequels that came out last year for PS2, Xbox, and GameCube. 
If there's one game that people still have the Dreamcast and they're still playing on, it's probably Soul Calibur. People even probably have that super glued into their Dreamcast and they never take it out. You'd be pretty hard pressed to find someone who doesn't agree that these are the top two Dreamcast games of all time. But only one can be crowned the champion, and based on your votes, the best Dreamcast game of all time is Soul Calibur. The best part of this countdown is that you can buy most of these games for less than 20 bucks. Well, that wraps up this episode of Filter. Remember, the opinions expressed on this show are yours, not mine. So make your vote count on future episodes by logging on to the Filter show page at g4tv.com filter. Until then, I'm Diane Mizoda, and I'll see you next time.